The Unity Step Show brings over a thousand students and Greeks to Barnhill Arena to watch one of the biggest competitions on campus. But what is this Unity Step Show really about? Greek brothers and sisters coming together as one and interacting and having fun. Eight sororities and seven fraternities are supported by their families, other Greeks, and friends by screaming and cheering. The AKAs, which is an African-American sorority, hosts this event every year and teaches the white Greeks how to step. Although many students do not realize that this event brings together all races, some actually see the unity. I mean, just to have something like this, I think it's just awesome. Uh, just even between sororities, fraternities, black sororities, black fraternities, just the whole works. I mean, I just think it's good for the U of A. I think this is so amazing. Stepping is a form of art and displayed when stumping. Arm motion and shouting is being presented. This might sound easy, but participants in Unity say it's not as easy as it looks. We went through sweat and tears and pain, but we got it. Well, we've been practicing for four weeks now, just nightly, so we've, we've put in a lot of effort for this. Average, I would probably say like 20 hours a week. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. A well-known fraternity might not be stepping for a trophy, but still wanted to participate in Unity. Uh, we've won three years in a row, and uh, this year IFC decided to vote us out. Uh, so we still decided to compete, and they said we could do halftime. BUCK stands for Brothers Under Christ and is the intermission for the show. Now unity might sound like all fun and games, but bragging rights are on the line for a whole year. They did really, really good. I think that if they would have competed, they probably would have fought. Unity is in its 14th year and continues to bring Greeks and non-Greeks together. So whether you are on stage stepping your heart out or just a supporter, know that you have given your contribution. Reporting for On the Hill, I'm Brittany Vaughn. Walking through the U of A crosswalks was a daily occurrence for student Heather Barnes. But one day, in August 2005, all of that changed. I flew up onto the windshield of the car. I broke the windshield. Um, she slammed on her brakes, and then I flew through the air like this. Um, she slammed on her brakes, and that forced it. Heather had been hit by a car. She flew 30 feet into the air, landing in the Chi Omega sorority house lawn. Um, and broke both legs. That crosswalk to this sidewalk. Yeah. Okay, so you landed on that sidewalk. I did. I was happy. But physically, um, you know, I was just really beat up, really bruised, um, had a bunch of cuts. But she is thankful the injuries weren't worse. Everybody, all of the medical people I came in contact with, all said the same thing. Um, it was absolutely a miracle that I ended up the way that I did. In the street, After Heather was the hit, the U of A has tried to make drivers more aware of crosswalks by putting signs up all over campus. I think that the university is definitely trying and they have put up a few more signs, but um, I think it's really ultimately up to the students to just slow down. Heather also recommends paying more attention to cars before crossing the street. You should absolutely never cross, even if you think you have um, enough time, because I definitely thought I did. Although Heather has recovered fully, she hopes her story makes students more aware of crosswalk safety. Reporting for UATV, I'm Alicia Silvestri.
outdated equipment. HD is the future of radio. Small cramped offices. You're basically on top of your equipment. And lack of storage space. Just a few of the reasons why KUAF National Public Radio has started its On The Move campaign. Really, we're out of room is what it boils down to. 16 years ago when they moved in, KUAF had no idea how much they would grow. Today, they are totally out of space. This is our station engineers, Dole Garner's uh, actual desk. One small storage room holds more than 14,000 CDs, which leaves little room to find anything. Even the restrooms have been converted to storage closets. No one's ever taken a shower in there. And image-wise, well, it's just not very pleasing. In the building itself, when you bring in people for an interview, they're like, you're NPR, it's not supposed to be an old townhouse. The new building, which is set to be across from the Fayetteville Public Library, doesn't look like much now, but it will. I'm here at the new location for KUAF Studio. This building is going to be totally renovated to make room for a new state-of-the-art facility that will allow them to expand their programming, give them a room for public events, and even leave them a little room to grow. How much room is up to the viewers and their donations. The extra space will make things better, not only for the employees. Each reporter producer will have their own production facility. They won't be climbing all over each other, uh, you know, arguing for studio time and studio space. But also for the community. And we'll be able to take that weekend news programming and make it daily. We'll have an hour a day of local news programming. Revolution. That's next on All Things Considered. Listeners will benefit from the extra news. Uh, NPR is, is where I get a feel for the news of the morning, you know, and then on the way home, I usually turn it on just because uh, they've already got something else that the paper won't have until the next day. And happy listeners are exactly what KUAF needs right now. If they needed a, a new building around here locally, yeah, I'd, I'd support uh, something where the money's going to stay local and they need you know, a new, uh, new building. Sure. Station manager Rick Stockdale says it best. It's exciting. It's exciting for all of us who are, you know, looking at this new technology and looking down the road. Reporting for UATV, I'm Andrea Bingham.